Hello, I'm Dr Tim Noble, the Executive Medical Director at Doncaster and Bassetlaw Teaching Hospitals. In comparison with the first year of the pandemic, this most recent year has been exceptionally difficult. The numbers of cases have continued to fluctuate throughout the year for the whole country and for us particularly in Doncaster and Bassetlaw. And we've had to alter our services and adapt as we've gone along. The reason it's been more difficult is the staff are very tired. They've worked really hard throughout this and continue to do so and I thank them all for that. And the patients have struggled as well because the waiting list has continued to grow as we're not able to completely do the amount of work that we really would like to do. So it has been more difficult. Uh, there have been benefits as well. We've developed new uh, technologies and new treatments for COVID which have been uh, nationally uh, applied and we've set up services that have helped uh, deliver that and I'll, I'll speak a little bit more about that later on. From a medical perspective the most challenging aspect is simply managing the, the volume of work that needs to be done and, and the work is looking after patients always. We've seen a, a really large increase in number of emergency patients coming through our units uh, at both surgical, medical and uh, paediatric and helping to look after this number of patients despite COVID still being present with us has been a, a significant challenge. In the first year of the pandemic some of that activity uh, disappeared for a period of time because people seemed to stay away from hospital uh, and obviously that's created a, a backlog of work and demand for healthcare. Uh, so that has proven very difficult and we're not alone in that. Many organisations are struggling with the same issues through their accident and emergency departments, uh, managing what is an increasing workload and I know speaking to primary care colleagues they're also managing an increasing workload. So there is a lot of healthcare to be delivered for the nation and for us and we have found it uh, difficult at times and patients are waiting longer at times than we really want. And we, we, we do know that that has an impact on people and it's not what we would wish for but we are managing the situation in the best way that we can accepting that some people will be waiting longer than uh, we would want and we find that challenging too. So we're, we're aiming to address as many of our backlogs in as uh, many creative ways as we possibly can to deliver the best care that we can and as an organisation we still aim to be outstanding in all we do. We've learned over the last two years an awful lot about a, a virus that we really knew a small amount about because we didn't have much of it around. Throughout the Covid pandemic we've encountered a challenge that we've addressed in ways that we never thought were possible in the past. We've had to design and redesign services at very high speed and deliver care in ways that we would have never envisaged possible uh, in, in the past. We have uh, more recently, as I alluded to earlier, been uh, approved to use monoclonal antibodies to help treat the vulnerable with COVID and antiviral drugs have been developed as well. And just before Christmas uh, of 2021, we were instructed as organisations to set up a service uh, within a matter of days uh, to deliver this for patients who are logged as vulnerable and test positive for COVID. I have immense thanks for the, the teams that worked tirelessly uh, in the two or three days before Christmas and then right through the Christmas period and into the new year to set up this service from uh, an absolute standing start. And the number of patients that we managed to treat was phenomenal and the impact uh, we will only know uh, in, in the future, but we certainly uh, were able to deliver uh, many infusions of monoclonal antibodies to help people with uh, vulnerable conditions and COVID. In many ways, the, the pandemic and the, the response to the pandemic has opened up some opportunities for us. We do have new ways of working. We, we are very much uh, utilising virtual cons consultations, patient-initiated follow-up and more responsive systems. We know that we, we are uh, triaging, organising patients in risk order in order that we, we look after the most needy first and this has created a a new way of looking at the workload that we, we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. The opportunities continue to abound and we've, in terms of education and learning and our, our organisational meetings, turning them into a virtual world has enabled greater attendance and ease of attendance in a busy clinical environment. As the pandemic approached us, we realised that we would be working very closely with our partners in a way that we hadn't done before and we worked with the council, with social care, with primary care and collaborated 
on all manner of approaches to try and improve the situation for the patients of Doncaster and Bassett Law uh, and the wider public. And those relationships have strengthened throughout the pandemic and we've continued to have weekly meetings uh, with the teams which have really enabled us to develop services and progress uh, elements of care for patients in our population. For me, the, the pandemic hopefully will be behind us in, in reasonably near future and from there we've, we've learnt a lot and I think it would be important for us to retain the good elements of what we've done and not necessarily go back to uh, old, older ways of working. So I think we've got to retain some sense of how to look after our own health and the health of people around us in the face of winter flu and other viruses because we know that the hands, face and space messages and ventilation really do impact on the number of cases of viral infections. And viral infections in every winter have caused uh, deaths and illness and coronavirus is just one of those but it's come along in a big way. But flu will also be quite a, a, a significant problem for uh, the, the organisation and for the country this winter we predict and so I would urge people who are eligible to get the flu vaccine to get their flu vaccine as soon as it becomes available.